bringing lots of different groups of people together and trying to create a harmonious whole is quite difficult and brings with it lots of issues which need to be overcome. And such a, a desire for harmony and for collaboration can cause fractures if we're not careful, can cause division and even conflict. So let's look at society uh, as a whole for an example. Issues that can arise can stem from communication failure, of not being able to engage with another person to person. Cultural and political misunderstandings can mean that it becomes difficult to nigh on impossible to uh, find that common pathway towards harmony and mutual collaboration. And I'm sure that as we reflect upon this, all of us can think of circumstances in the current media which highlight some or all of these issues which spring to the surface. It's natural for us to strive to navigate the complications and the complexities of these fragments, of these issues that present themselves. And so continue to seek and establish that harmonious whole within our society, what we can call that flourishing community. Community, of course, itself, bringing together those two words, common and unity, those things which bind us together. Opening ourselves up and engaging in dialogue, then, is an important factor in realizing this harmony. Talking is very powerful. Talking together is never wasted time. Dialogue is absolutely important in the socio-political sphere of society. Absolutely, absolutely needed for our flourishing. And when dialogue works, we can see the fruits and the benefit of it. We can also see how entering into dialogue can bear immense fruit in that arena of faith. Not only the personal dialogue between ourselves and Almighty God, that's only a small part of it, but also in the one-to-one -one meetings we have with the other. At a primary level, dialogue establishes relationships and builds bridges of encounter. This isn't insignificant in bringing together that harmonious whole. In the meeting of Jesus with the woman at the well, a dialogue opens up. A simple conversation starts. A relationship is established and barriers are lowered. That she's a woman, he's a man. That she's a Samaritan, he's a Jew. Those barriers are taken away. That dialogue for the woman proved to be absolutely invaluable for her life. And when we listen carefully to that conversation we hear in John's Gospel play out between Jesus and the woman, we realize that what we are actually witnessing is someone's conversion moment. That's a big step, a big moment. The simple dialogue between two people becomes a moment of proclamation, a moment to be able to proclaim the good news, the kerygma. It's no accident that the church understands dialogue as being an essential tool for evangelization. I love how I was reading the other day how St. John Paul II described dialogue as the church seeking to uncover the seeds of the word. Isn't that a wonderful definition? 
the church seeking to uncover the seeds of the word. And John Paul II links dialogue intimately with the action and power of the Holy Spirit, who, he reminds us, continues to enliven and inspire the mission of the church, our being sent out. This is an important starting point then for us too. If we are to engage fully in the new apostolic era, which we've been reflecting about over these last few months, then the pathway to the kingdom must be open to authentic dialogue with our brothers and sisters. We must seek to uncover the seeds of the word in the relationships that we forge, in the bridges of healing we seek to build with the other. Just like the woman at the well, these conversations with our brothers and sisters contain the seeds through which conversation and conversion can take place. The place where prejudices and wounds can be explored and overcome. The place where we can help our brothers and sisters to see those subtle traces of God's presence in their lives. If we are truly open to a spirit of dialogue, it means that we never drag people to where we want them to be, to this perfect utopia where we are. Rather, we go to them, to those periphery pointers, and then walk with them even if these places are in the not-so-ideal place, the not-so-ideal midday sun, as is the case in our gospel, the time when Jesus met that woman. These dialogue moments will bear fruit. The seeds of the word will bloom into faith and into intimacy with the Lord. We can follow that in the woman's journey of conversion uh, in our gospel. While we may feel incapable or perhaps unprepared to enter a dialogue, let us place ourselves vulnerably in the presence of the Holy Spirit. The proclamation of the good news is always the inspiration and animation of the Spirit, not our own doing. Amen.